Okay, so we are still looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the chapter on diagonalization. Okay. And I think we just, we're just about to look at geometric interpretation of some of this stuff. Okay, so, where is this? No, it wasn't here. Oh, yeah, okay, so there was this stuff, ellipse and stuff, which I don't find at all illuminating, so I'm going to skip that. But here we have this example here. I want to do this, look at this now. The projection matrix P equals 1, 0, 0, 0 projects onto the x-axis. It is relatively easy to show that its eigenvalues are 0 and 1. Okay, so you could, you could do that by, solve, by solving the eigenvector equation in the normal way. You know, by finding, sorry, by solving, yeah, okay. Now, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 equals 0 is the y-axis. All the vectors in this eigenspace are squashed into the origin. Let me draw a picture. So here's, we're in R2, right? There's R2. And here's a random vector, uh, which I'll call V. No, I'll call it X, because it's not an eigenvector. Now, what's PX? Projecting onto the x-axis. Projecting onto the x-axis means you draw a line from your vector, the end of your vector, perpendicular to the, to the axis you're projecting onto. I'm not going to call that x because that makes me think that makes me think it's um, something to do with the x-axis. It's not. Anyway, so you project v onto the x-axis and it becomes this. That's p v. Okay. Or another example would be you want to project maybe this vector. Uh, I'll call this one w. You project it. So right angles there. Oops. Right angles like that, and so this vector here. That's PW. Okay? Now, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 equals 0 is the y axis, okay? Because if you take a vector on the y axis like that, um, so let me call, you know what, let me just call it y, vector y. Now you project that onto the x axis, what you get? You just get the origin, right? So that origin there, that is PY, okay? And it equals the zero vector, which of course is just zero we thought of as 0 times the vector y. So that shows that this y on the y-axis is an eigenvector of p with eigenvalue 0. Okay? Uh, similarly, a, a vector pointing down along the y-axis will also get projected down to the origin like that. Now, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 2 equals 1 is the x-axis. Okay? Because these vectors on the x-axis, um, so let me take a vector on the x-axis. Let me actually have one pointing negative direction this time. So here's a vector on the x-axis. Okay, now when you project that down onto the x-axis, well, it's already on the x-axis and so nothing happens to it. So you just have the same vector, so that equals px. So what we have is px equals 1 times x, because px equals x. Okay. So, that, so that's saying that vector on the x-axis is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. Okay. So this is a geometric interpretation of a geometric way of thinking about what's the eigen, what the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this projection matrix are, and the same can be applied to, to other projection matrices, and also to projection matrices in higher dimensions. Okay, I have another example. The reflection matrix R equals minus one zero minus one zero zero minus zero one reflects about the y-axis. Okay, because if you go R times a vector x y you get the vector minus x, minus x, y, right? Okay, so if you have, again, we're in R2. So hold on, I've got a sort of cat. Okay, so if you have uh, this vector here, maybe, call it v, now, when you apply R to it, you just you leave the y the y um, component unchanged, but you change you flip the sign of the of the x component, and so that means you just reflect it across the y axis. Okay, so it becomes there. So this is now what we're calling it. We're calling this R V. Okay. Now. It says that it has eigenvalues minus 1 and 1, and you could work that out in the normal algebraic way. However, it says the corresponding eigenspaces are the x and y axes, okay? Because if you have something on the x-axis, x, 
you apply R to it, and you reflect you reflect it across the um, y-axis. So you get R x is over here, and that's equal to minus x. Okay, which of course is minus one times x. So that's saying that something on the x-axis is an eigenvector of R with eigenvalue minus one. Okay, then the y-axis. You have something on the y-axis. Okay, a y over here. Now, if you apply R to it, you don't change the y component, you reverse the x component, but the x component of this one is just zero because it's on that axis, so you just get the same thing, R, Y. So it's saying that R, Y equals Y, which is one times Y. So it's saying that Y, anything on the y axis, is an eigenvector of R with an eigenvalue of one. Okay. So again, a geometric way of figuring out the eigenspaces of this reflection matrix. And the same can be applied to any reflection matrix, um, not just ones that are parallel to the axes, and not just ones in R2, also in R3 and higher. Okay. So we have a final example, a final geometric example. Let A be a 3x3 three three matrix that represents orthogonal projection onto the plane x plus 2, y plus 3z. So orthogonal projection is just the same as projection, okay? So orthogonal projection, it's called orthogonal projection because that's a right angle, that's an orthogonal angle. That, you, know, you project it by bringing down this line at right angles. So now, however, we're not going to, we're not going to orthogonally project onto... We're in, so we're in R3 now, and now we're not going to orthogonally project onto... Well, if you're in R3 and you're orthogonally projecting, on, you'd be projecting not onto an axis in general, but onto a plane, Right? But we're not going to project onto one of the coordinate planes, like the xy plane or the xz plane. We're going to project onto this random plane, x plus 2, y plus 3z. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, no, the cats are fine. So, okay, so it says that the eigenspaces are e0 and e1, so that means that the eigen, saying that the eigen, eigenvalues are 0 and 1. And it's saying that the eigenspace for E0 is 1, 2, 3. What's 1, 2, 3? Where does that come from? It's here, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, you know, because this equation is actually, it's 1, 2, 3 dotted with x, y, z equals 0. That's what that equation is. That means that every vector on the plane, so every x, y, z, oh, every vector x, y, z on the plane, when you dot it with 1, 2, 3, you get zero. So every vector on the plane, x, y, z, is orthogonal to one, two, three. So that means that one, two, three is the normal to the plane, right? So this vector here is the normal to the plane. So it's saying that if you have any multiple of the normal to the plane, any vector that is orthogonal to the plane, in other words, then that's an eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. Why? Because it's just squashed down onto the plane. If you want to have a picture, we can draw a picture. We have here is our three, okay? Now, this is the plane, this is that plane in R3, okay? Now, if we have a vector that is orthogonal to the plane, okay? Oh, sorry, actually, let me, again, I always draw the general thing first, didn't I? So, that plane goes through the origin, right? Okay? As it has to, if it's going to be a subspace, okay? So, if we have a a random vector, so we draw that vector there. V, you orthogonally, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's V. Orthogonally project onto the plane, so you drop a line down at right angles to the plane, and that gives you your, what are they, what matrix are they calling it? A, they're calling the matrix A. That gives you AB, okay. Now, if you have a vector that is orthogonal to the plane, so let me call it, um, U. So this vector is already at right angles to the plane. Now when you drop the line down, it just goes straight to the origin. So you get that AU equals the zero vector, which of course is zero times that vector, the original vector, zero times U. So that shows that zero is an eigen, eigenvalue of the of this, this uh, projection matrix A, um, which projects onto this plane, and its eigenspace is is just multiples of the normal, right? Multiples of one to three. Okay. Now, if you take now this thing, then it's just vectors in the plane. So, 
we've just chosen two random, two random but linearly independent vectors in the plane by checking that the, by just choosing things that satisfy the equation. So minus three and one, that's because you have minus three plus one is zero, and minus two and one, that's because you have minus two plus two is zero. Okay, now if you take anything in the plane, so here's a vector in the plane, call it W, call it W. Now if you apply A to it, it's already in the plane, so projecting it onto the plane does nothing to it. It leaves it the same. So you have AW equals W, which means that AW equals 1 times W. So things in the plane have an eigenvalue of 1, right? And anything in, the, anything in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of any two linearly independent eigenvectors in the plane, and these are two, these are two linearly independent eigenvectors in the plane, so that's suitable as a basis for the eigenspace E1. Okay. Um, and that's really all. There, there are other things that can be done. Um, you could reflect through a plane as well. We reflect on the plane. You could reflect through. A, you could reflect across a plane, and you could do these things in different and higher dimensions where you can't visualize it so well. But the same kinds of arguments could be used to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors without actually doing any algebra. Okay, and also to get a picture of what's going on.